into what we're here to announce today, a landing system. A human landing system that will take the next man and the first woman to the south pole of the moon within five years. And that's what we're doing here at NASA today. That landing system is going to be led out of the Marshall Space Flight Center right here in Huntsville, Alabama. It's a great day in large part because of another political decision akin to John... I will say that um, this is not a decision that was made lightly. A lot of hard work has been done here in Huntsville over really well over 10 years now regarding landing systems um, at the Marshall Space Flight Center um, and Jody Singer, who of course is... 40 years after Apollo, we discovered hundreds of millions of tons of water ice on the South Pole of the Moon. Water ice represents air to breathe, water to drink. It is, in fact, rocket fuel. The same oxygen and hydrogen that powered the space shuttles. It's the same hydrogen and oxygen that will power the space launch system. And it's available in hundreds of millions of tons on the South Pole of the Moon. That's what the resource prospector was all about. And here in Huntsville, the design and, and development of that landing system uh, happened. Uh, and I, I understand um, some of their concerns, um, but I, I think it's also important to note. So this is important. When we talk about going from the gateway down to the surface of the moon and then back to the gateway, you know, if we're going to go to the moon and have it be a sustainable program, we got to have a lander. <laughs> and ultimately, that lander going from the gateway down to the moon and back to the gateway, in most conceptual designs, that requires three elements a transfer module to get from the gateway down to low lunar orbit, a lander to go down to the surface of the moon, and then an ascent module to get back, uh, no kidding, uh, to the gateway. So that's three elements. Two of those elements are highly focused on propulsion. Folks in southern Tennessee, uh, and of course we got uh, a rec And I would argue that uh, when it comes to uh, propulsion, there is, there is no place in the world that is more experienced and better than the Marshall Space Flight Center. So the propulsion elements are the key elements that have the preponderance of the, the assets to achieve the goal that we're trying to achieve. It is absolutely true that when you think about um, the module where our astronauts will be, that cannot be done without the Johnson Space Flight Center, which is why there are going to be 87 full-time equivalent jobs there for that program at the same time. It's designed for 15 years. Once they're on that gateway, they're going to transfer. There is no doubt uh, in the history of NASA, we have had starts and stops and starts and stops. And the difference is we've got great plans, we've got great engineering, we've got great programs. And at the end, um, the money doesn't materialize. Without the resources, there can be no Artemis program. We are sending a woman to the moon in the Artemis program, Artemis named after the twin sister of Apollo. And now when we go to the moon, we have this highly diverse, highly qualified astronaut corps where we can go to the moon with all of America. That's something that's exciting. And I don't think that's partisan. I don't think it's political. I think it's important for our country. I have an engine section with four RS-25 engines, the same engines that were on the space shuttle. On top of the hydrogen tank will be an inner tank and then an oxygen tank.